This day is indeed the most auspicious day in our nation as it won back its freedom after many years of relentless struggle. We at SJBHS celebrate Independence Day every year with an equal amount of zeal and passion. This day teaches us about power and unity among Indians and how it can strengthen our nation. Today, let's take some time to value our nation and never forget the sacrifices made by them. May the glory of this day be your inspiration for tomorrow. Please be seated. Anything can be achieved if you have a burning flame in you. May the traditional lighting of the lamp illuminate our minds and hearts with truth and wisdom to set and achieve worthy goals for this academic year. I request our chief guest and speaker for today, Major General M.N. Devaya, Mrs. Kaveri Devaya, Principal of SJBHS, Reverend Father Sunil Fernandez, the Administrator of the Primary Section, Reverend Father Vishal D'Souza, uh, Mr. Brian McCurtis, the Vice Principal, to kindly light the lamp. Music is the best form of worship. We acknowledge His mighty existence in our life and invoke His benevolent presence at every step of the way as we journey along this year. The ISC Choir will now lead us in a melodious prayer.
you, ISC Choir, for that beautiful prayer. A patriotic mind sees a nation's flag not as a flag, but a nation itself. Rishon and Brito from Standard 4C will now express his thoughts on independence of our nation. Good morning, everyone. Freedom is the open window through which pours the sunlight of the human spirit and human dignity, says Herbert Hoover. Today, our minds are without fear and our heads are held high up in the sky with high spirits. On this auspicious day, a day marked in the hearts of every Indian, as we turn around and flash back our journey of 75 years since our independence, our hearts are filled with pride and honor. As we have covered such a long distance of togetherness, freedom is never given. It is one, says Philip Randolph. It is on this day, August 15th, 1947, we freed ourselves from colonialism and brought India back with the revolution. Our freedom fighters like Mahatma Gandhi, Bal Gangadhar Tilak, Shubhash Chandra Bose, Lal Bahadur Shastri, Bhagat Singh and many others were responsible for the struggle to free India from the shackles of injustice, which has been an inspiration to all of us as an epitome of courage and bravery. If you want to fly, give up everything that weighs you down. With these thoughts, these courageous heroes fought valiantly that we might live in freedom and dignity and made us realize the dream of an independent and unified India. Our father of the nation, Mahatma Gandhi, has paved us the way to walk in the path of truth and non-violence. The future depends on what you do today, said Mahatma Gandhi. India is an independent nation now. It is our responsibility to uphold the pillars of virtues in India. As we pay tribute to these heroic personalities and salute them, may their footprints keep guiding us to, to make India a better place to live in. To conclude the words of Mahatma Gandhi, be the change that you wish to see in the world. Jai Hind! Thank you, Rishon, for those meaningful words. All people may be different, but we stand united under our country, our flag, and language. Let us listen to a delightful medley of patriotic song in Hindi, Telugu, Bengali, Tamil, Kannada, and Malayalam. I invite the middle school and the high school students to bring forth the feeling of patriotism in us. Oh, it's 
Thank you for those harmonious tunes. It is a great honor to have in our midst the chief guest and the speaker for the day, Major General M. N. Devaya. I request Ms. Odela John to introduce our speaker. Good morning to one and all. It is indeed a rare honor and an absolute privilege for us to be blessed with the presence of Major General M. N. Devaya, who has magnanimously consented to be our chief guest for the day. Major General Devaya is an old boy of the batch of 1978. Thereafter, he studied at St. Joseph's PU College. He joined the NDA in June 1980. He was commissioned into the Madras Sappers in June 1984. He spent many glorious years in the Indian Army and retired in September 2021 in the rank of Major General. He served as the company commander in the Siachen Glacier. He was responsible for providing engineering support in the highest battlefield in the world. He also commanded an engineer regiment in Leh and the Kashmir Valley, which was responsible for the construction of the anti-infiltration obstacle system in the Uri sector. This was considered a great feat as it was approximately 300 kilometer in high altitude and accomplished in nine months. He trained the Botswana Defense Force for three years. He commanded the MEG Center Bengaluru. Here, he was responsible for training approximately 4,200 soldiers at any given time. He also served as the chief engineer of Sikkim and Eastern Command. Like a true Josephite, Major General Devaya excelled in sports as well. He was the national champion and represented India in sailing from 1988 to 1991. His passion has lived on, and he now works at promoting water sports. He is the Vice President of the Indian Kayaking and Canoeing Association. He is also the President of the Karnataka Kayaking and Canoeing Association. President or Major General Devaya also serves as a founder member of the Yachting Association of Karnataka. He is blessed with a fantastic family whom he adores. It is indeed a pure pleasure having you with us, dear sir. Your esteemed presence has brought great delight to each of us gathered here at SJBHS. To express our gratitude for your very presence in our midst today, we would like to felicitate you. May I request our principal, Reverend Father Sunil Fernandez, SJ, to present our chief guest with a silver plaque. May I now request our primary school administrator, Reverend Father Vishal D'Souza, to present a Kadi memento. <laughs> Dear fathers, kindly present our chief guest with a sapling. Thank you, fathers. Thank you, sirs. Dear sir, we have heard fantastic things about you. It's now time to hear wonderful things directly from you. May I now request our chief guest, Major General Devaya, to address the gathering on this momentous occasion. Thank you, ma'am. Good morning, fellow Josephites. On good morning. Thank you. On behalf of my family and myself, I extend a warm greetings and best wishes to all of you and your families and your near India ones on this occasion of our Independence Day, where we celebrate 75 years of independence. Our best wishes to each and every one of you. This is a particularly poignant moment for me because it was exactly 50 years ago that I entered the portals of our hallowed institution, St. Joseph's Boys High School, in January 1972. I joined the fourth standard 
and became a Josephite as all of you are. So I often have wondered what makes a Josephite? Have you all thought about it? Do you have to pass out of the 10th or 12th to become a Josephite? Or do you have to spend a year in school to be a Josephite? Is there some such criteria or guideline which enables you to call yourself a Josephite? Or is one day in the school enough to be a Josephite? What do you think? One day is enough, I heard someone answer. <laughs> Good. What I think is that the time spent as a Josephite is immaterial. What we need to do is to embrace the ethos of the school. What is the ethos of the school is very beautiful. The essence is very beautifully distilled into two words of our motto, faith and toil. So if these two essentials you embrace, you are a Josephite. Our forefathers must have spent long hours to decide what is the ethos and how to convey it in the simplest manner. They have done it through the motto and in a little more elaborate manner through the school song or the school anthem. Wherein we clasp our hands and gods and evils on set hold in defiance. I think these are the essentials or the essence of being a Josephite. So the day you internalize and make these your own and live by these ideals, you are a Josephite. And that leads me to a little wider picture that you need not actually have been a member of a Josephite institution to be a Josephite. If you can influence your friends, your neighbors, your circle of influence to absorb these values, then everyone can become a Josephite. Do you think so? What do you think? Yes, no, maybe. I can hear a few yeses. Thank you. So let us all embrace the Josephite way of life, not just in the school, but in the entire society. What does the school give you? I am really proud of the education and upbringing I received from St. Joseph's Boys High School. It is one of the few schools which takes you beyond the textbook, beyond the classroom, and opens your eyes and provides you opportunity to experience all facets of learning and growth. In our days, we had fewer opportunities, but we as students utilized each and every one of them. Whether it is the swimming pool, or the basketball court, or the hockey pitch, football, cricket, we played every game, all of us. Athletics, we used to stay back in school after 3.45 and only go home at 6 in the evening. Along with that, we had a beautiful library where we read voraciously. It may surprise you to know, even my parents did not know, that from 7th, 8th and 9th, for three years, I read an average of one book a day. So how I did it? In class, while the 
don't do these things now well well the teacher was teaching i used to have a story book under the desk and keep reading at times at night we used to have a study period of one half from 7 to 8 at home so when my mom was not around then the story book came out and even there were days when under the blanket i have read with a torch so that is how i managed it and i had maintained the record of each book i read so by the time 9th 10th was a little difficult because the academic pressure caught up but by the time i had completed 9th i had been through much of the books in the library and the british library so what i'm trying to say is that read read as much as you can because that is where there is a wealth of information and you will learn things far beyond the boundaries of the classroom and the textbook the school provides you many other opportunities for example we are one of the few schools to have the ncc and the scouts and guides please join these organizations and you will benefit from it our school is blessed with the most devoted and dedicated teachers who serve not for a few years but who serve for decades and give their entire life to the children please make use of their knowledge and their dedication we also have a very very vibrant old boys association which comes back to the school and contributes in many ways we are involved in promoting sports in bettering the quality of education setting up better facilities like the recently established loyola technology center and father principal tells me that a social environment lab is also in the pipeline so all these are benefits which you get because you are a member of this school so do not let these opportunities go waste please utilize them and make the best of them coming to the special day that is today independence day we gained independence from colonial rule 75 years ago but do you think that we are really independent today as a nation as individuals or is it still work in progress uh, work in progress good i think that till the time each and every citizen of india is educated and his mind broadened his vision enlarged until he can understand the true realities and make wise choices until then we are not truly free each citizen needs to be empowered so that he knows what is right and what is wrong and that is a quality which i think joseph's teaches and all of us josephites have that quality so to sum up i think our country will be truly independent the day each and every citizen is a josephite i think that day will be the true independence day of our great nation thank you jai hind thank you sir for those illuminating words music expresses that which cannot be said and on which it is impossible to be silent the students of standard 4 will now render a patriotic song Nanamunara hi hu reshwa se pa 
Thank you students for that inspirational music. There is always light if we are brave enough to see it and brave enough to be it. May I request our principal, Reverend Father Sunil Fernandez SJ to enlighten us with his words of wisdom. All of us are very thrilled to celebrate 75 years of independence. It is a momentous occasion for each one of us there are nostalgic feelings and truly these moments are amazing, awesome, fabulous and fantastic. Freedom has two important dimensions, responsibility and accountability. It is not merely political but spiritual and moral. In the words of Rabindranath Tagore, where the mind is without fear and the head is held high, where knowledge is free, where the world has not been broken into fragments of narrow domestic walls, into that heaven of freedom, dear God, let our country awake. Dear students, when we gaze at the tricolor, we have three bands, the saffron color, the white color, and the green color. The saffron color, it signifies courage, strength, and sacrifice. The white color symbolizes peace, honesty, and truth, purity with the Ashoka or Dharma Chakra, the 24 spokes of the wheel in blue. And then we have the green color, which symbolizes vibrancy and life, fertility, prosperity, and the auspiciousness of our land. In a way for us, as we celebrate our independence, the three bands of our national flag it also symbolizes the three major religions of the world. Saffron for Hinduism, white for Christianity, and green for Islam. And it is this diversity which we celebrate today. And as we celebrate our independence, we are celebrating our many faiths, our many cultures, and our many voices. Therefore, each and every Indian becomes precious and significant. The education in our school underlines this diversity and pluralism. So I expect each and every one of you to practice this in your life, in the true spirit and legacy of faith and toil. As we celebrate our independence, 
we wish that our diversity and freedom lives long we are a secular nation as enshrined in our constitution and we should never let anyone behave or speak differently i wish each one of you uses your education to teach and practice that india is a country of multiple faiths and cultures and no one faith or culture can claim to be indian you are getting an education in values here in our school use it to argue intelligently and rationally that all people are the same it is in these small but significant moments when you say and do the right thing that our country will progress all of us feel elated jubilant and thrilled as we are celebrating the 75 years of our freedom which has responsibility and accountability the students parents staff members and alumni the bonds of friendship and joy of working together with people of different backgrounds and faiths make our school special i hope each one of us can cherish this and nurture it in our lives namma desha namma hemme our nation our pride namma bharata shreshth bharata mera bharat mahan as the government has given us a call har ghar tiranga mane mane yallu trivarna it should not become merely a slogan of har ghar tiranga but har dil me tiranga and we are proud to be indians thank you and i wish you all a very happy independence day jai hind thank you father for those exhilarating words our freedom struggle was long drawn and nationwide we present to you a scene from a little known aspect of our freedom struggle a tableau will now be performed by the middle school and high school students representing our struggles at the time when the whole country is celebrating independence day and recognizing the contribution of all sections of society in the freedom struggle we have selected the santal rebellion to showcase the struggle of the adivasis in their fight for freedom and in doing so we pay tribute to the 15th president of our nation draupadi murmu who comes from the santal tribal family the santal rebellion gave birth to the modern santal identity it was responsible for the creation of the present state of jharkhand it also inspired the tribal people to protect their culture and tradition from any kind of destruction and interference the santal rebellion is a matter of pride for the tribal population of our country the 19th century witnessed innumerable movements but the ones like the santal revolt hold a significant role in india's struggle for freedom the santals were the tribal people inhabiting the forest of rajmahal hills the santals who originally spread over regions of present day bihar and west bengal were relocated by the britishers in the rajmahal hill region the reason behind the relocation of santal people was the demand for agricultural labor following the depletion of population in permanent settlement zones of rajmahal and jangal mahal hills sponsored by the british and local landlords santal people entered the area and began clearing the jungles they were employed as agricultural laborers or got land on lease the region in which the santals 
were relocated, came to be known as Dominico. In 1832, the East India Company demarcated the from the demarcated the Dominico from the region of Jharkhand and gave it to the Santas to settle with the promise of non-interference in their land. But with changing times and the rising demand for the Britishers, the rent to the Santas raised to an exorbitant rate. The Santal Revolt, also known as the Hull Revolt, started on June 30th, 1855 to help of prominent leaders like Bissa Munda, the Tatiaba, father of the earth, as known amongst tribal, who is the massive war against the British rule. Siddhu, Kanu, Chand and Bhairab, along with their two sisters, Fulu and Jano, also played an important role in the movement. Revolt, O oh Santas, Mahalis and Mundas, we are all tigers here. Let's not abandon our lands and be forced to enter the forest. Let us stand together, O oh Adivasi Forester. We will not be driven out. We will not be afraid. We'll gather courage in our soul. Did blood runs in our veins. Let us stand together, O oh Adivasi Forester. Afflicted with oppression of the Zamindars, the misery of the people, the country is adrift. Fly to the bow, arrow and axe. Today, for us, death is better. Bissa Bogan is our leader. He has come down for us in the land today. Let us get ready with quiver, arrow and sword. We shall assemble on Dombari Hill. The father of the earth speaks up there. We shall not be afraid of the monkeys. We shall not leave the zamindars, money lenders and shopkeepers. The British, they have occupied our land. We shall not give up our Kukati rights from the jaws of the leopards and snakes. We reclaimed our land, the happy land seized by them. Ultimately, the Santals were trapped in a situation where they had the only option to revolt against the Britishers and the Zamindars, leading to Santal Rebellion. The Santal Revolt was very effective for a while, but it could not succeed against the absolute power of the British government and was suppressed. Even though this great insurrection lasted only for six months, it had a huge impact upon the Adivasi community and served as an inspiration for other Adivasi revolts. It was the Santal Rebellion that sowed the seeds of independence in subjugated India. Even before the forefathers of the national movement prepared the ground for nationalism, the tribals had given a clarion call to end the rule of the British East Indian Company. The tribal leaders were among the first legion of leaders who sacrificed their lives for the cause of the motherland. Thank you for that ecstatic performance. No man is entitled to the blessings of freedom unless he is vigilant in his preservation. Our middle school teacher, Miss Rebecca Thomas, will now address us on this theme. Good morning, everyone. It is indeed a befitting day to not only honor our freedom fighters but also to salute our defense personnel of the Army, Navy, and Air Force. The Defense Forces of India have a long and honorable history of hundreds of years. Following India's independence in 1947, they have protected and kept our country safe from all external threats. In the services, we see a true reflection of the basic national concept of unity in diversity 
an exemplary role model for the rest of our countrymen. Defense personnel of all classes, caste, creed, and religion are able to serve the nation with total dedication. Living together, eating together, speaking the same language, and observing each other's religious festivals. An apolitical outlook, secularism, discipline, integrity, and loyalty are some of the essential values inculcated in all. The oath that differentiates the military profession from all other professions and is the bedrock of their ethos is the safety, honor, and welfare of your country come first, always and every time. The honor, welfare, and comfort of the men you command come next. Your own ease, comfort, and safety come last, always and every time. Let us imbibe and endeavor to practice and carry forward these qualities, thus making us better human beings for this beautiful world. Slightly off the chartered course, I would like to add that part, as part of a service family, all our postings, Cochin, Mumbai, Vaisak, Delhi, Wellington, Nilgiris, Mao, Calcutta, was a life second to none. Our housing was a microcosm of India, self-contained with every amenity and sports facility available. More important, a support system and friendships were forged for life. It was an unforgettable experience. Once again, I would like to thank our defense personnel for the important role they play in keeping our country safe. Jai.